So hi everyone. What we're going to be creating here is a very simple setup for animating objects in Unity by using C Sharp. We will set up a very basic animation for a rotating cube here, and then we will be triggering that with a script. So let's get into it. So first of all, we're going to need a new project. We'll call this project animation. We will make sure that it is a 3D project. And we'll choose our location. And then we'll click create project. Okay, so jumping into it, we want to have a very, very basic scene setup. We'll need a plane and we'll need a cube. So we will right click the hierarchy field here. We'll say 3D object and choose a plane. I will select my scale tool and I will scale the plane up just so that we have a bigger surface to work on. Then I will uh, deselect the plane. I will right click and I'll choose 3D object and choose a cube. So with this cube, I'll just raise it up so that it is floating above the ground here. So before I continue, I just want to make this a bit more visible. So I'll import a few textures to my assets folder. So I went to Google and I Google a few uh, different uh, textures. You can find your own. But in this case, I have a picture of a carpet. I have a picture of two different types of wall or brick, basically. Without having to set up any specific materials or anything, I'll just drag and drop these textures directly to the uh, individual layers here. And now, as you can see, we have the cube with the texture on it and the ground with the texture on it as well. So uh, let's move our camera in a bit closer, maybe upwards a bit. And I might even want to rotate it down just a smudge so that we can actually uh, see it a bit from an angle here. So next up, I want to animate the cube here. So I'll select the cube and I need to open my animation panel. So I'll go to window animation. And this is the animation panel. Right now, there are no animations set up for this cube here. So I'll just click create. It'll ask me where I want to save it. So I'll put it under my assets folder and I'll call it cube animation. So what this will do is it'll add a animator component to my cube here in my inspector. Now in my animation panel, I am able to create different keyframes. The easiest way uh, to do this, I find, um, instead of going into add property and choosing the transform rotation, everything, you can just start by adding in values here. So I'll start by just scrubbing this and having it back to zero, which will add a keyframe that is zero here. Then I'll go forward in time with the time scrubber here. So maybe to, I don't know, 50 frames. And then I'll go to rotation here on input a value and I'll say 359. So what this will do is it'll basically just make my cube rotate. We just want to have some simple animations to work with because we will then uh, build our trigger onto one of our uh, keyboard buttons via some script. So deselecting this again and clicking play. The animation should now be playing. The cube should just be rotating. So what we want to do now is we actually want the cube to be triggered at a certain point so that we can actually choose when it should start rotating. So we'll start out static then we can click a button and then have it rotate. So I'll exit game mode. I will uh, exit the animation panel here. So first of all, we'll set up our node based animator controller. So with the cube selected, we'll go to the animator controller here, over here. So we'll go to the animator controller over here, we'll click the controller, we'll double click the cube controller, this should open up this node based controller. Here we have our entry point and we have our cube animation that we have just set up. As soon as I start my game, it'll go from the entry directly to the cube animation. So if I click play, you can see that it just goes through and through this animation over and over again. So now what we want to make, we want to make a idle default state. So we will right click, we'll select create state empty, and just leave it as that. We'll then click it again, right click it and choose set as layer default state. So now it shouldn't do anything when we start the game mode. And sure enough, it just goes to the new state, which is our idle state where nothing happens. So now we need to attach a script that will trigger the cube animation when we hit a key down on our keyboard. So going back to the scene view here, selecting the cube, we want to add a new script. So I'll click add component. And here I want to type in a name that makes sense for the animation script. So we will call this one anim controller. Because Unity doesn't have anything called anim controller, the only thing that it will actually present me with is we do want to create a new script. So yes, is this the correct name of the script? Yes, the language is C sharp. Enter. So now it has attached my anim controller script to my cube. So now I can open my editor. I'll double click the script. This will open up Visual Studio, could also be mono develop. So here within the anim controller script, we want to set up a starting variable. This variable is public and it is an animator, not the animation, but the animator. And we just call this anim. Remember the semicolon. So at start, when the game starts up, we want the script to catch our controller, which means that we'll say anim equal to get component. In this case, we want to get the component that is called animator. 
parentheses and remember the semicolon at the end. So now our anim variable is actually equal to the animator itself. So we can actually trigger all the functions within the animator from our variable. So what we'll be doing is we will be setting up an if statement that'll look for a key press. And then if it registers that key press and it'll actually then play back the animation that we choose. So if, and then the conditional statement, in this case, we'll be looking for the input. The input is get key down. And in this case, just the key that we will be looking for is just the number one on our keyboard. Remember the curly brackets. So the code that should be executed if this if statement proves true of this condition is true is our anim.play. So anim.play with a capital P. And in parentheses, we need to input the name of that animation that we just had. So if I go back to Unity and I go to my animator, we call it cube animation with a capital A. So playback cube animation, remember the semicolon at the end. So save the script and let's jump back into Unity. Let's stay within the animator here. So we have our game view, we can see the cube, but we can also see how these states are changing. So I'll click play. So now it just goes directly to the new state and this just runs the loop over and over again. As soon as I hit one on my keyboard, we jump from the new state to the cube animation and it starts playing that rotation animation that we've created on the cube itself. 